In this video we're going to be looking at creating Lightroom brushes and hopefully explaining to you how they work and how certain features within them will enable you to sculpt the light and your entire image. So the brushes in Lightroom, which can be found here, are controlled by these sliders here. So you can add, change the temperature, the tint, the exposure, so on and so forth. And we also, down at the bottom, we have the actual brush controls. That's the effect controls. This is the brush controls. So we have A and B and A raise. And A and B are just two different settings for the brush, depending on how you set these up. We also have the size of the brush which can be taken right up or taken back down. That's also controllable if you have a roller mouse by the roller mouse or indeed the square brackets in the keyboard. So we can take that up and down with the square brackets in the keyboard and you'll notice that changing. The feather is how much distance between the main effect and the outer edges of the effect. So you can see how that changes as I do that. The flow is how much of the effect is applied. And then we have the density. I'll get to the density in a minute. So right now, I'm gonna take the flow to 50%. Before I jump into what's happening here, we also have auto mask. And auto mask is a feature uh, that allows you to paint around objects or within objects. And the software reads an object that probably reads the contrast or the light within the object that doesn't know in this case that that's a castle or whatever. So it's just the way the software has been programmed to auto mask around certain areas. So I leave the auto mask on when I'm creating any brushes 99% of the time. Right, back to the flow. I have the flow set at 50% and I'm going to take the exposure down to Let's go for minus 143. If I paint that once, you'll see that that's a subtle edit. And what basically that is, that's a 50% application of minus 1.3. So if I paint back in again, that's it building up and building up and building up until it reaches minus 1.43 in this case. It can't go over that. I could keep painting. It's never going to go over 1.43 so you can do subtle edits with this and build up and build up like so and I'm just going to show you the auto mask working here the auto mask is not entirely perfect so I'm just going to keep painting here until I reach the maximum of 1.43 and hopefully you'll see that taking effect right so there we go if I press the letter O on the keyboard You'll notice that, yes, it has very slightly bled onto there, uh, and very, very slightly, but it's, it's masked around the areas that I wanted to paint. If I wanted to take it out of there, that's where I could jump into the Erase function, take the flow, in this case, right up to 100, take the brush size right down, and you should see a very, very subtle difference. If I paint over there, you'll see a massive difference. So that's how the Erase can work, and to let you see where you're working and where you're erasing, press the letter O in the keyboard. So there you go, you can see what's happened there. I'm going to step back once and I am going to show you the before and after, which is there to there. If I delete that and I get back into my brush and at 1.43 and I take the four down to say 20, 18 and I paint in you can see subtle changes. So I can do this and I can keep painting and build up the image and sculpt the light that's here. And as I say, auto mask is on so it shouldn't affect too much down here at all. And I can keep going in and painting in the image here. But if I wanted to start adjusting and adding lighter areas, I would create new pins. And then I would take the brush size down and take the exposure up to say minus 62. I'm just doing this really quick for this video and paint in there and then I wanted to lighten it again 
I could paint in and I just moved the brush and I could paint in again and if I press the letter O on the keyboard you'll see where I've painted because my foe is right down so I can keep going in and subtly sculpting the light. So that's how flow works. Flow works divisible of whatever the settings you have here. So now we're going to look at density. So if you imagine density as opacity, at the moment it's set at 100% opacity of minus 1.39. So if I paint with the brush, that is 100% opacity of our preset minus 1.39. If I paint over that, nothing's going to change. It's not going to get darker. It can't get any darker than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that, just by hitting the backspace key, and I'm going to drop the opacity to show you how you can manipulate the light and mould the light using the density of this. So if I paint once in there, you'll see that that is 45% opacity of what we've set the exposure to. So I can go in and now increase the brush size and mould the light. In this case, the cloud. So if I paint over that, I'll do this very quickly for the purposes of this video. Right, so that's one pin that we have used. And you can see the pin there. Now, I have the effect set at minus 1.39, which I've said quite a few times, but I want to increase that effect down here. So if I push the density further and I paint in, it's now going to paint 65% of minus 1.39 and it will darken there. And I can mould the light. Still using the same pin, and you can see it is now affecting the entire image differently. So I can sculpt any of the light, I should say, depending on how much opacity is applied. If I want to darken it again down there, I can increase that and darken again down there. Again, leaving the rest of the image. If I wanted to de decrease any of the opacity that I've already painted, I don't have to erase or create a new pin. I can just drop the opacity back slightly and then just paint over certain areas. And it allows me to go in and sculpt the light in here. Now I'm doing this very liberally for this, but hopefully you get the idea with it. If I wanted to increase certain areas again, so this is 87% of minus 1.39, I could go in and paint in there. If I needed to erase that area, take that right back. I could take it back to zero if I wanted. It would take it back to what it was originally. And if I just show you that, there's the before and after. So you can see it's removed it there totally. Put that back in. So you can see how the density affects everything if you think of density as opacity. I've left the range mask off for these. I'll cover the range masks in another video. So that's the darker areas. If I wanted to create lighter areas, I would then create a new pin. And I would then go in and let's just take that to 0.83. And my opacity, and I can build this up. I'm just going to paint in there just to see what it's like. For me, if that wasn't enough light, I could increase it here to get to the point where I think, right, that's the best effect, so 1.13, and then I could paint in everywhere else within that, and the areas I wanted it to affect. And let's go down in here, but I don't want it to be too light down in here, so I'm going to drop the density back and just highlight that ever so slightly. Take it in here, and what this is is 26 in this case, what this is, is 15% opacity of 1.13. But even if I keep painting, it's not going to affect it. It's only 15% of plus 1.13. But if I wanted to lighten these areas further, what I could do, and I'll just go over some of the lighter areas here, with that, 
what I could do is I could increase the density of the opacity. And I'm going to go for 41 just for the purposes of this and I will increase it. So you see it gets brighter. But as you notice, I only have one pin. In this case for the light, because the upper reaches of the light are 1.13. I can't go and paint any heavier than that. So I could increase the lightness here, take it through right throughout the water. Yes, it will bleed on to whatever else. Uh, I could increase that in there and make that a little bit brighter. So I'm just going to increase the density in there and paint in there just to highlight these areas. In there, let's, let's increase that just slightly. So I do that. If you happen to start where you have started painting on a pin, it will move your mask, so be careful. If I grab that pin and move it up, hopefully you'll see the mask moving around. I'll reset that, Control and Z, and it drops back in. Although we've darkened the sky working with flow, I can lighten certain areas in it as well. So basically what we're doing is we're sculpting the light with the brushes. So I could go in there, I just changed my density of this, knowing that it's at 1.13 as I keep saying. So hopefully you get the idea of the brushes and how you can actually sculpt an entire image just by using brushes. Another thing that you can do, if I wanted to warm the light up any, I could adjust the temperature in here. And it will affect everything that I've just painted as you see. So you have total control over the adjustments even after you have created and saved a brush. And that brings me into saving the brushes. I'm just going to leave that one like that. And that was just auto mask, density at seven and custom. Now these are already pre-programmed. Some of these are already pre-programmed in Lightroom and you can just jump into them and adjust the sliders. But if you started to want to create other ones that you knew that you would use quite often, this is when you would save them. So I'm going to get into custom. Right down at the bottom, we have save current settings as a new preset. And this one I'm going to call density. Just for the sake of this video, and click create. And you'll see where that drops in. So I now have one in here called density. And these are always here. Unless I go, I don't want to use that one. And I go down, delete preset density. Yes, so it's gone, but my edits are still there for now. Right, I'm going to show you how to save and adjust a brush at the same time for this. So I'm going to click new, and I'm going to take one that I know will really affect this image. It's too much for this image. So I'm going to take Moody Dark Sky, and I'm going to paint in here. And you'll notice that because of the density is down, I'm going to adjust the density now just to show you the effect of this. Right, this is way too much for this image but I'm going to show you how you can update this setting now I'm not going to save this one because I have it set but how you can update this if I wanted to add some more magenta into that image I could adjust that there now it does look terrible on this image but it gives you the idea and right now it says landscape moody sky dark edited if I wanted that as my update I would go down to the bottom and choose Update Preset Landscape Moody Sky Dark. And that would update it, which would now include that magenta. So that's how you update them if you want to update them. Or you can save current settings as a new preset. It is entirely up to you. Hopefully that lets you see how to create brushes, how to work with brushes and how to sculpt the light of an image using the brushes and how you've preset them. The next video, which I'll put on the screen now, is an entire edit using Lightroom brushes that I've created. Thanks for watching. <laughs>